In this video, we're going to look at a type of stoichiometry calculation in which you are given measurements for multiple reactants within a calculation. So in this situation, we are told the volume of gases at standard temperature and pressure for both oxygen and hydrogen in the production of water. So the first problem we need to address is which measurement do we actually use? Well, for the sake of discovery, let's try both measurements and see if we can see anything interesting, starting with oxygen simply because it's listed first. Now, because we want to figure out the amount of water that we produce, let's convert our volume here into moles by dividing by 22.4 liters per one mole, which is our molar volume of a gas at standard temperature and pressure. Next, we need our stoichiometry coefficient to compare how much water we would produce given a certain amount of oxygen. So again, in our reaction, we only have one oxygen molecule and if we have one oxygen gas molecule, then we would produce two water molecules like so. And because we want to know the volume of water vapor that we produce at standard temperature and pressure, we multiply by our molar volume of gases conversion factor here. And you can actually do this without a calculator because we can see that we have both divided and multiplied by 22.4 liters per mole, which means that these two steps cancel out here. And all we need to do is take 3.50 liters of oxygen and multiply it by 2 over 1, which is by 2, which comes to exactly 7.00 liters of water vapor we produce. Now, this is using the oxygen measurement as our baseline, so let's try the same calculation again, but this time using our volume of hydrogen instead. Let's follow all of the same steps, so let's convert our volume of a gas using the molar volume at STP conversion factor here to find the amount of moles of hydrogen. And from our mole ratios, we see that in our reaction, we have two molecules of hydrogen gas and produce two molecules of water vapor. So this conversion factor doesn't actually change the number here because it's the same as multiplying by one, but we're going to show it anyway to show that we're referring to water rather than hydrogen. And since we're asked for the volume of water vapor produced, let's multiply by 22.4 liters per one mole. And again, we have the same shortcut here because we've divided and multiplied by 22.4 liters. These two cancel the themselves out. So effectively, all that we're doing is taking 2.50 liters of hydrogen and multiplying it by 2 over 2, which is 1, which means that we will end up with the same volume of water vapor as we started with in terms of hydrogen. Now, right here, you can see that we have a problem. These numbers are not the same depending on which measurement or which gas measurement we used originally. So because we do not get the same volume, how do we know which calculation is correct? Well, if we take a look at this calculation in a different way, let's go back to our initial measurement of oxygen where we started with 3.50 liters of oxygen gas. Now, instead of finding out how much water we produce, let's find out how much hydrogen we would need in order to get this to completely react. So let's convert this again out of molar volume of a gas by using our molar volume of gas conversion factor to find the amount of moles of oxygen. Now, this time, instead of comparing oxygen to the water vapor we produce, let's compare it with hydrogen. So again, in our reaction, we know that we have one molecule of oxygen gas, and for every one molecule of oxygen gas we would need, we would need two molecules of hydrogen gas in order to react with them. And if we multiply by 22.4 liters per one mole, once again, that would tell us the volume of hydrogen that we would need to react 
with oxygen. And again, let's use that shortcut because 22.4 liters is in the numerator and the denominator. These two cancel themselves out. And all we would need to do is 3.50 times 2 over 1, which comes out to 7.00 liters of hydrogen gas that we would need in order to react with 3.50 liters of oxygen gas. Now, if we compare this to the measurement that we were given, we're told that we only have 2.50 liters of hydrogen. What we need is clearly greater than what we have, and therefore what we have is a shortage of hydrogen. Another way of putting this, if we have a shortage of hydrogen, we actually have too much oxygen, which means that if we have a shortage of hydrogen and too much oxygen, the hydrogen is going to be consumed and we're going to have a certain amount of leftover oxygen that will not react because there isn't enough hydrogen to react completely. Therefore, the measurement that we got or the calculation that we did using hydrogen as our baseline is the accurate one because we don't have enough hydrogen in order for the oxygen to react completely. There are two terms that describe hydrogen and oxygen in the case of the reaction that we just did. Hydrogen is what we call a limiting reagent or limiting reactant if you want to use the chemical reaction terms. This is the chemical of which we have a shortage. Whichever chemical we don't have enough of to react with the other chemical is described as a limiting reagent because once again, once the hydrogen is gone, once we've used all of it up, our reaction stops and the reaction is limited because we don't have enough of it. Conversely, oxygen is described as being the compound we have in excess because we have too much of it in order to react completely. So whenever you're given a calculation in this situation where we have more than one measurement of more than one reactant, the first thing that we need to do is find what the limiting reagent is to find which of the two chemicals is going to be gone first and therefore which calculation we should do. So if we try this once again, this time using both mass and molar volume of gas measurements here, let's find out whether aluminum or chlorine gas is the limiting reagent. So the way that I like to do this is just to pick one of the two quantities as our point of comparison. I'm going to pick aluminum simply because it's listed first in the question here. So what we want to find out is if we have 4.35 grams of aluminum, how much chlorine gas do we need to react with this completely? And is the amount that we have enough to be able to do that? So because we need to compare moles, or rather because we need to find out how much chlorine gas, the volume of which we would need, to react with this, let's go ahead and convert our mass of aluminum into moles, for which we need to look up the molar mass in our periodic table. And the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98. So let's divide our initial mass of aluminum by the molar mass in order to find our moles of aluminum. Next, we need our stoichiometry coefficient, meaning that we need to say if our reaction requires three molecules of chlorine gas for every two atoms of aluminum, here is our stoichiometry ratio so that we can convert atoms of aluminum to molecules of chlorine gas. And that tells us the number of moles of chlorine gas that we need, that we would need to react with this amount of aluminum and to compare it directly to the volume that we're given. Let's multiply this by our molar volume conversion factor at standard temperature and pressure, 22.4 liters per mole. And if you put this into your calculator, you will find that this comes to approximately 5.42 liters of chlorine gas at standard temperature and pressure that we need. Now, if we compare this to the 2.50 liters of chlorine gas 
that we have, what we need is clearly greater than what we have. In other words, we have, as we observed in the previous calculation, we have a clear shortage here, which means that this volume of chlorine gas is not enough to react with this mass of aluminum completely, which means that our chlorine is going to be gone first, and therefore we can conclude that Cl2 is limiting, and from there we have all of the information that we need. We need to use our measurement of chlorine in order to do the final calculation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are told that we have 2.50 liters of Cl2 at standard temperature and pressure, and we need to find the final mass of aluminum chloride like this. Let's go ahead and convert our volume of gas measurement into moles using 22.4 liters per mole, and that tells us the number of moles of chlorine gas that we need. And next, we need to use our stoichiometry coefficient. So we need to compare if we have three molecules of chlorine gas, we would get two molecules of AlCl3 as a product. So there is our next conversion factor here to eliminate chlorine. Next, because the question asks for mass, we need to calculate the molar mass of AlCl3. And if we do that, molar mass of aluminum is 26.98. If you look up the molar mass of chlorine in your periodic table, it should be 35.45. We have three chlorines, so let's multiply that by three. If you put that into your calculator, you get 106.35. And if we do a little bit of quick arithmetic here, it's a very easy number to remember. 133.33 grams per mole is our molar mass of AlCl3. And if we just check to see whether all of our units have canceled, moles canceled, chlor uh, chlorine gas cancels, and liters of gas cancels, leaving us with grams of AlCl3, and if you put this into your calculator, it should come to 9.92 grams of AlCl3 that we have produced. So in summary of how to solve a situation where you have one limiting and one excess chemical, the first thing that you need to do is identify which chemical is limiting by comparing how much of a chemical we have in order to find out how much of the other chemical we would need, and then comparing the amount that we would need to react with the first chemical with the amount that we have from the given question. If we have a shortage, you have just discovered which chemical is limiting, and if you have a surplus, you have discovered which chemical is excess. To practice this, you can try the practice problem subsequent to this. Every question begins the same way. Determine which chemical is the limiting reagent and use this information in order to calculate how much product you would produce given this measurement.